say it was only about a mile in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, 10 minutes. That's yeah, how it is. 10 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. He was lagging up that hill, but he was walking as well, mate. You're still pushing kick, weren't you? Yeah, downhill now, Billy. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Friday afternoon and I'm about to go get my kit ready for the Hardmalls Hardwalls 40. But before I do, I want to give you a little bit of background into why this race means quite a bit to me and why we're approaching it in a bit of a different way than I usually would. The Hardwalls 40 is actually 47 miles. It starts in Beverly and finishes in Moulton. It's about four to four and a half thousand foot of elevation gain, I believe. It covers much of the Yorkshire Walls Way, so there's some beautiful scenery and it's my local stomping ground. But the real importance comes in the finishing line. It's at my old secondary school and I didn't have the best time at school, if I'm honest. Between bullying and a talent-orientated culture, I developed really low self-esteem and the opinion that if you weren't naturally talented in something, there wasn't much point in trying because you could never reach the same level of the more talented kids. Until my late 20s, I didn't re-educate myself and realise that actually this doesn't apply to running. Yes, we've all got a ceiling, but it's amazing how high that ceiling actually is regardless of where our starting point is. I have surprised myself no end with how far I've gone with it. However, these subconscious thoughts that I've still got in my head, this need to keep proving to myself that I can compete has become a bit of a problem um, in the last couple of years where I enter races and I feel this big pressure to perform and even when I tell myself I'm just going to go and enjoy the race and it's not about the race itself, it's about the experience, I still struggle and even when I have good races I tend not to enjoy them. I think it all comes back to this subconscious need to prove something and the pressure that I put on myself so I think this is the perfect race to deal with that. Starting in Beverly and finishing at Moulton School where all these unhelpful thoughts um, came from is going to be quite the journey. Right deep soppy stuff out of the way I need to go make some food and get my kit ready for the morning. Right guys, all my food is made up, ready to go. So we're gonna quickly go through the nutrition, race plan, and then we're gonna go through the gear. Let's begin with nutrition. Um, I've gone for a mixed bag of stuff. This is an ultra marathon at the end of the day. We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know what's gonna to happen to my stomach. I've been testing rice in training, so that's gonna be wrapped up in these foil packs with a bit of soy sauce and a bit of avocado. Easy to open, easy to get down. I've also got some salted baby potatoes and then Going on to the last bit of carbohydrate fuel I've got is a homemade gel. This has got berry concentrate in and honey. Um, it's something I've spoken about along with the other stuff quite a bit in my nutritional video on how to fuel an ultramarathon on real food. Highly recommend you check that out. I'll link it up there. Once we get towards the end of the race, my stomach will want all sorts of stuff. So as much as it pains me, I'm bringing some ready salted crisps uh, just to get some more salt in. Uh, peanuts, salted peanuts as well, flat coca-cola, this one kills me, um, I don't agree with this stuff at all but flat coca-cola can apparently settle your stomach when you're having issues so as a last resort that is going to be there. And as we speak I'm making some vegan sausage rolls, just a couple of them, again not some I'd usually have but if my stomach really wants fat and it's struggling on that side of things and it needs that to break stuff down then that's going to have to take priority. And that's pretty much the nutritional plan, it's just to play it by ear, start with the rice, potato, the carb rich stuff and just see what my stomach wants as we go along. As the pack I'm going to be using the Montane Gecko VP12 Plus. Uh, again, I'll link the review to that up there. It's a quality pack. I highly recommend this, guys. I'm going to be using the Hoka Oneone Speedgoat 4 in wide fit. That's a mouthful. Reviewing this next week. These are a really great shoe for longer distances. The cushioning on is fantastic. And while I've struggled with these for width in the past, the wide fit has been spot on for me. I'm going to switch off completely from the race now, chill out, watch a movie, play a few games, and just try to distract myself from worrying about about things too much. Boss picking me up nice and early in the morning um, to take me through to Beverly, so I will catch you on the morning for race day. Alarm goes off and she gets up to watch the morning news. Doesn't work no more. 
mama tells a lot of stories about her youth. Drinks more lately, ain't got pills in many different colors too. Morning light is showing, she moves the chair to look out at her view. But a shop was by right across the street. It stands by the sunrise he used to be in the afternoon. From the couch to read, goes to old pictures and memories. Hey guys, we're in Beverly now at the Rugby Club. I've just registered, got my tracker, race number, and we're all ready to go. Bob's up the car, he's gonna be setting off in half an hour to go to the first checkpoint when the race starts. Um, it's now half past seven, I'm gonna go warm up, get myself mentally prepared, and uh, ready to hit the start line. I'm really looking forward to it now. Uh, bad night's sleep last night, and a little bit nervous, if I'm honest, over what's gonna happen, but it's nice and overcast, which is ideal for me and my fair hair. It's gonna come out sunnier later on. I think that's where we're gonna struggle later in the race. Other than that, I'll see you on the other side, so wish me luck, guys. So with the race underway, I set about getting into a nice, easy pace. The front runners bombed out and a number of people followed them, probably going out too fast. But I ended up outside the top 20. And Simon Jones called me up from the second group, who's part of Pickering Running Club. We ran together for quite a while. It was really nice to have the body next to me, someone to help just slow me down and keep my mind off the race. I was grazing on rice and potatoes at this point, and all looked really good going to the second checkpoint around mile 11 and a half. Everyone's going out a bit too fast, I think. Freaking hell, mate. Harry Holmes oh, came oh, through, yeah. mate. Fuck. Mm. Do you know what, mate? Literally just have an hour. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So, the rice there, there's only potatoes. Get a bit of watermelon down your mate. Just a couple of pieces soft in your mouth. Thank you, pal. Get a bit warm, mate, that. See you soon. Over the next four miles, myself and Simon picked off a few runners, but this was just the natural pace we were going at. Then getting towards Millington Village Hall, this is around mile 17, I became isolated and I was on my own for the first time in the race. This is when I started to pick up the pace a little bit, I felt like I could kick into a, another gear and I was still eating fine, the rice and potatoes were going down nicely and it was still overcast at this point. I was starting to feel the calves and hamstrings a little bit around mile 25, but going into checkpoint four in Friday Thorpe, I was still in good spirits and able to keep getting down solid fuel, which was a massive bonus. Going out of Friday Thorpe, there's a decent climb, uh, which then takes you on to Fixendale. It was at Fixendale checkpoint and mile 30 that I had my last bit of rice. I managed to get a load of water at this checkpoint, but the next 10 miles were a long, long stretch without being able to get filled up. At this point, the sun really did start to affect me. I was getting severely dehydrated. I could tell there was salt gathering on my clothes and on my hat, um, and I was starting to suffer. The next 10 miles are probably the hardest I've ever had to work while running. I was just literally felt like I was grinding to a halt, to the point where even just a slight gradient had me wanting to walk, but I pushed through. The big climb that takes you up to Setrington Beacon and the final checkpoint was absolute torture, but there was this breeze that just started coming down and gave me a lift. So I ran up to the checkpoint and approached Bob, and it's safe to say I wasn't in the greatest of shape. Well done, Billy. All right, mate. Bumped. Eh? Bumped. Have you? I think so, mate. I uh, don't know if this is the right thing to do, but... Oh, what, so where are you at, then? Why? You're far from it. You're only 10 behind the third. <laughs> Come on. Rice, that's water, mate. Hot now, isn't it? Not taking any food, mate. Some rice, potato. Have you got any on you, like? Um, some little bits, but cats are coming. Got one in there. Oh, yeah, I've got one, but uh, there's one there. Still going well, though, mate. Yeah, so there's only about a mile in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, 10 minutes. That's yeah, how it is. 10 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. He was lagging up that hill, Billy. He was walking as well, mate. You're still pushing kicks on, mate. Yeah, downhill now, Billy. Relax now. <laughs> It's fair to say, leaving the last checkpoint, I was on my last legs. I had nothing left. 
and I haven't done really for the last 10 miles. But I knew there was a runner only 10 minutes ahead and if I could just average nine minute miles and he was really bonking, maybe, just maybe I could catch him within seven miles. So I set to work and it's probably the toughest seven miles I've ever done. I've never been to such a dark place, but going through my hometown, approaching the school where I had all those issues was such a driving force and really helped me along. And as I approached the last half mile and I could see the sports hall of the school in the distance, I just started to put my foot down. And go for it. Well done, Matt. Crossing that finish line in the way I did was just amazing. It was painful, it was horrible, all at the same time, but I knew I was gonna be forming some cracking memories from it. As far as I was concerned at this point, I'd only managed fourth, but I was really happy with that. As far as I was concerned, it was about the day out and anything else was a bonus. It wasn't until later I realized that third place had gone wrong following some relay runners. So I'd actually overtaken him without even knowing it. So I managed to get over the line with a podium finish on top of everything else, which made for a fantastic day. And right at the end, I managed to get my trophy off John in the sports hall where I'd had all these issues at school. So that was such a fitting end to the day and not what I'd expected from it at all. Okay guys, take care and I'll catch you the next one. Thank you.